Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a board certified ICU doctor, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. On this channel, we talk about the intensive care unit and other medical topics. Sometimes I do fun videos like this one. Thanks to everybody who's subscribed so far, and special shout out to those of you who follow me over on Instagram at the Intense MD. You can follow me over there for posts about the ICU, posts about my daily life. I'm training for a half marathon, so I'm posting some of my training journey over there, and the occasional cat photo, because I have two great cats, and they're kind of cute. So today's video, I know other doctors on social media have discussed this before, but I figured I'd make my own video about things that we see on medical TV shows that just aren't true. I'm sure this goes for any field where somebody's profession is illustrated on the television. You're like, this is not how this goes. And I'm sure some of it is just for dramatization, some of it is to make filming easier, some of it is to make a plot line more interesting. But just so you know, some of those things just aren't true, don't happen in the hospital. So I try to pick ones that I didn't see come up a lot in other people's content, but there might be some crossover because these are things that frustrate all of us. So the first thing is the person jumping on the bed to perform CPR. Usually somebody jumps on the bed, straddles the patient, and is pumping the chest, and that's no. So typically when we start CPR, we are at the side of the bed. Sometimes people will use a stool for more leverage, but it is not very efficient to jump on the bed. And chest compressions are very, very tiring. It is an upper body workout if you're doing it properly. So the person who's performing chest compressions gets tired. So we need to be able to swap these people out quickly. So usually there is a line that forms of people who are next to do chest compressions and they will either get on the opposing side of the bed and get ready to start as soon as the other person says, okay, this is my last one, or during a pulse check, when we are checking for a pulse to see if there's any return of pulses, they'll be switching in line and the next person goes. So jumping on the bed, it's great for drama, it's great for television, but this does not happen in the hospital. I've only seen somebody do it once, and I think it's somebody who watches way too much TV and just got really into it, but in a typical day, this is not something we do. I know I've talked about this in prior videos, but I want to emphasize that people don't just wake up after they've had cardiac arrest. After their heart stops beating and we perform chest compressions and we've resuscitated and we get their pulses back, usually there's a lag between the time we feel a pulse and the blood pressure is high enough to perfuse the brain to deliver enough blood and oxygen to the brain for it to function enough to wake up. And an analogy I've used in the past is think of it if you've ever passed out in your life. If you fainted, you might come back too, but it takes a period of time. And your heart didn't even stop beating. Your blood pressure just got really low or your heart rate became erratic. So just suddenly eyes popping open and somebody looking around as soon as they finish resuscitation is not plausible. There are also situations where somebody's been in a coma for a long period of time and suddenly wake up and that doesn't really happen either. <laughs> so uh, again, good for drama, good for effect, great for plot line if somebody seems to be dead or in a coma and just suddenly wakes up and that's a great cliffhanger for the next episode. But for real life, these things don't happen. This is a really nitpicky one, but I'm gonna say it anyway. So you'll see somebody's telemetry monitor, the EKG going with the heart rhythm, and then it goes rhythm and then flat line, like normal rhythm and then flat line. That's not common either. And I've honestly never seen that happen. Typically before somebody's rhythm goes completely flat, it becomes very abnormal in a regular. We'll see abnormal beats, we'll see what we call ectopy. So it doesn't go from the heart's beating normal and just stops. Usually when the heart, when somebody's dying, their heart slows down and then starts having abnormal beats, abnormal rhythm, and then will flatline. And sometimes they'll be flat and then have a little flicker of an electrical impulse 
and then flat again. It's very uncommon for someone to go flat from a normal rhythm. Like I said, a nitpicky thing, something that doesn't really matter. And again, like if somebody's dying on TV, they're not going to show all these abnormal rhythms. Um, but another flat line thing that bothers me is they'll see a flat line and they go, okay, everybody, let's shock. And I've said this before as well. You do not shock a heart that is not beating. The whole purpose of doing a defibrillation or shocking the heart is to organize an unorganized rhythm. If there's no electrical impulse and there's no rhythm, then there is nothing to shock. So again, it's great for drama and I think maybe just seeing how a code usually works and just having someone do CPR and giving epinephrine every three minutes probably isn't the best for television. It definitely makes my heart pump and, you know, it gets a certain emotion out of me, but that's because I'm the one at bedside. <laughs> but watching it on TV probably isn't as exciting as the Hollywood Code Blues. The fourth thing is, and again, this is something I know they do for television, is nobody is wearing a mask in the OR. And I'm sure it's because they want people to be able to see the complete facial expression and you know, the actors are able to be more expressive or be able to say their lines better, but every single surgery, every single sterile procedure, you're in complete sterile garb. And that means that you have a scrub cap on or some kind of bonnet on your head to cover your hair. You have eye protection and eye shield, a face mask, a sterile gown, and sterile gloves. So, I know, and I, I believe scrubs, they actually, I think they did wear masks in the OR because they wanted to be true to medicine. I've listened to the scrubs podcast, Fake Doctors, Real Friends, and I know they brought this up on there that the creator really prided himself in being as accurate as possible. And one of his friends is a doctor, so he kind of leaned on him to give him advice on what's accurate, what's not accurate, what's important, because he didn't want to be like every other medical show that, you know, just kind of was like, whatever, it's not reality anyway. He wants to be as close to reality as possible, even though it's a comedy, even though it's a sitcom. So I, I kind of appreciate hearing that side of things. And it's pretty cool that his friend, um, the character JV is based on one of his real life friends who is a critical care doctor. And number five, a lot of the doctors on TV, even though they have a declared specialty, definitely operate outside the scope of their practice. All over the place on house, house is doing all these crazy procedures and, and they're the ones, you know, doing the pathology slides, reading the radiography, doing the biopsies. This doesn't happen. You stay within your scope of practice in medicine. So if I think somebody needs to go to the cath lab for a cardiac cath because they're having a heart attack, I call a cardiologist. I do not schlep them away to the cath lab myself and perform this procedure because it is not within the scope of my practice. Pretty much in medicine, you stay in your own lane. And there are many reasons for this. There's reasons why this is a team effort. There are people who are advanced trained in their specific specialty for reason. And I'm sure, you know, they probably don't want to pay all different actors to have all these different roles or it's more exciting when the main characters do all the work. But in the real world, in the ICU, a single patient is probably seen by numerous doctors a day. We'll have, for instance, for any given patient, they might have a cardiologist seeing them, a kidney doctor, an infectious disease doctor, and me. So there's four doctors right off the bat. While I know a decent amount about all of these individual systems, I'm not necessarily an expert in the field of the kidneys or infectious diseases or cardiology. So if somebody needs dialysis, I'm not doing the dialysis orders. I will put in the dialysis line and I'll discuss with the nephrologist that I think a patient needs dialysis, but I'm not making that decision single-handedly in doing all the work beginning to end on working up that patient. We do it as a team effort. We make decisions as a team, but at the end of the day, I stay in my lane and the consultants stay in their lane as well. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it'd be an interesting break from doing reaction videos since I've been reacting to a lot of different TV things. I figure I'd just tell you individual things that I found a little annoying about TV. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram over at the Intense MD, and I will see you in the next video.